Before we do anything with the VSN Visual Guidance System, first we need to verify that our RS1 or SC1 steering system is performing to the best of its abilities. Our first step will be running the system through a hydraulic cowl. To do this, we'll go to the gears on the right hand side and then we will select the steering wheel for steering setup. We'll then go to steering control calibration with the SC1 and RS1, we do have the ability to have quick cals, but to have the best performance, we will want to do a hydraulic calibration on the machine. To initiate the calibration, drive between 1 and 4 miles an hour, and then hit the play button or the auto steer engage button on your machine. The system will automatically run through the calibration, and when the calibration is finished, you will get a summary screen. Once finished, we will hit the check mark. After we've completed our hydraulic calibration, the next thing we want to do is verify our wheel control effort. We will go to wheel control settings and then if we press the min button it will move the wheels to the left and to the right whichever button we push. What our target wheel velocity is one degree per second. On C-series rogators you will press the min button and then also hit your auto steer engage button on the joystick. We can increase or decrease this minimum control effort to get that optimal wheel velocity of one degree per second. You should not need to change this by more than a couple of percentage points. You will want to drive the machine around one mile an hour while doing this test. For four-wheel steer machines, it is critical that the four-wheel steer offset is set to zero. If the four-wheel steer offset is not set to zero, steering performance will be affected. So now that we've verified performance on the RS1 or SC1, it is now time to calibrate the VSN visual guidance system. So in preparation for calibrating the VSN, we want to make sure that we select a field that has straight rows for at least 100 yards and that's relatively flat. The reason being is we will manually be driving the machine down the rows and so you want to be driving as straight as you can down those rows. We also want to have a good stand of crop in those 100 yards so that the system can pick up and get a good pattern on the rows. We also want to make sure that the wind speed is no more than 10 miles an hour and that our solution quality is over 50 percent. The reason it's important to take your time during the calibration is that an okay calibration will work great in good conditions but if conditions aren't so good having that really good calibration where we've taken our time will let the system perform to the best of its abilities. To initiate a calibration or do any other interactions with the VSN, you will want to go to the UT. We will first set our row spacing by touching, we'll push the row spacing button here where it says no cal. We do have five profiles for different row spacings and we will calibrate only for the row spacing, not between maturities of crop or between different crop types just for your row spacing. So we're going to go ahead and type in 30 inch rows because that is what this field is planted in. We're going to go ahead and hit next. 
before we start a calibration, we want to make sure that we are going to set ourselves up to have the best calibration. So we want to have a relatively flat field. We want to have a good stand of crop in that field. We want to have straight rows for at least 100 yards because we are going to manually drive the machine down the rows and we want to make sure that we are driving as straight as possible when we do our calibration. We're going to go ahead and hit start here. And once the system gets over four miles an hour, it is going to initiate the calibration. And we want to drive between five and 10 miles an hour doing this calibration. We also want to make sure that the wind is not blowing over 10 miles an hour when while we're doing this calibration. So once we're done with the calibration, you'll notice our camera to furrow offset as well as our camera yaw offset. The camera to furrow offset is calibrating the right camera lens distance to your nearest furrow. The camera yaw offset calibrates whether the camera is pointed to the left or right of center. We are finished with the calibration, so now we can hit our check mark and we are ready to operate the system. So here we have our object pool for the VSN Visual Guidance System. At the top of the page you will see our VSN status indicator. Our indicator is green and that will also correspond with our widget on screen. What determines the colors of this VSN status indicator is our solution quality. So right now our solution quality, you can see there in the corner of the widget, is 94%. In the lower quadrant of this page, you see the solution quality threshold that defaults to 50%. The solution quality is the confidence factor that the system is following the rows. Things that can hinder solution quality is higher weed pressure. The higher the weed pressure, the lower the solution quality. Once the system gets below 50%, it will either kick out if you're in VSN only mode or revert back to your guidance line in VSN plus mode. When the solution quality gets within 10 percentage points of the minimum threshold, the icon will turn yellow. This warns you that you are getting towards the end of the solution quality threshold. When you are running in VSN only mode, you can run this setting down to 40%, but I would not recommend going below that. That's going to be uh, for use in weedier conditions, things like that. Uh, when you're using VSN plus mode, you can run that solution quality up to 70% where it's going to have that backfall to your guidance line and that's going to make sure that you're, you're uh, confident in your, your row guidance. On the left hand side you will see our roll indicator. This is the roll rate that the inertials in the RS1 or SC1 are seeing. Here you can see that roll indicator as the system tilts side to side. On the right hand side that is our speed indicator. In the middle we have our camera furrow offset. That camera furrow offset is going to allow us to adjust how the machine tracks between the rows. When we do a calibration we are trying to drive the machine as straight down the rows as we can but not everyone can drive 
exactly straight down the rows. So this camera furrow offset will allow the machine to be moved over to center up in the rows. I would suggest making a couple of passes through the field using the VSN system to see how the machine tracks in the row to make adjustments. Also, some people will use uh, auxiliary cameras or mirrors to see how the, the wheel tracks between the rows. You can use this to kind of move the machine one way or another. This is a setting that you'll set initially, but uh, will not have to mess with very often. And also at the bottom of the page, we have our row spacing indicator. This will allow us to save five profiles of different row spacing and easily swap between different row spacings but not between crop types or crop maturities. With the VSN visual guidance system, we have three modes of operation. First is our GPS only mode of operation. This will be indicated by the satellite icon. You will use this just like you're used to using normal guidance for AB lines, last pass, or curvatures. This will not utilize the VSN system at all. Next we have our VSN only mode. VSN only mode is used when you do not have an existing guidance line. For example, going around the outside of the field or the headlands. With VSN only mode, when the VSN indicator is green and you are driving down the rows, all you have to do is hit your auto steer button and engage the steering. You'll notice the icon turns to a silhouette of a VSN camera with a check mark when it's engaged. It can easily be disengaged by grabbing the steering wheel and it will automatically disengage when you come to a headland or through a grass strip or high weed pressure. Once the confidence factor or the solution quality goes below the threshold, which defaults to 50%, it will backfall to no guidance and you will have to grab the steering wheel. Last we have VSN plus mode. VSN plus mode will utilize the VSN system but can backfall to your guidance line. So if you have a last pass line in the field and you have a, a grass strip going through the field or something like that or to turn you in on the headland you can utilize your last pass guidance line or an AB guidance line to turn you in. And then once the system identifies the rows, it will then line you up in the rows and the VSN will take over. For example, right here, we're acquiring the line utilizing our RS1. And then once it lines up in the rows, the VSN will take over with that soft tone. 